Emily with another brief grief activity from the team. Today we'll be creating a labyrinth and learning how it can be a mindfulness tool and a way to help us grieve. Now what is a labyrinth? Well, they're actually a spiral path that have the same entrance and exit, just like this one here. People have been walking labyrinths for four to 5,000 years from the outside to the inside as a way to calm down and relax. Some people think it helps to move our attention from the world outside of us to the one inside ourselves, just as you move from the outside of the labyrinth into the center and then back out again, back into the world. When you have a lot of grief feelings, it can be helpful to take the time to quiet some of the outside noises or calm a busy brain to focus on what's happening inside of us. Now there are a lot of labyrinths in our own community. There's a link below that you can check out to see what's near you. But since we can't visit those right now, today we're going to make a mini finger labyrinth you can use at any time. We're going to use puffy paint to make our labyrinth so it sticks out from the paper a bit so our fingers can easily walk the path. Here's what you'll need. To make puffy paint, you'll need equal parts of flour, salt, and water, and any food coloring you want to make it colorful. I used half a cup of flour, salt, and water. First, mix your flour and salt together, and then start adding your water and food coloring. Keep mixing until it gets to a good consistency. You don't want it to be too thin it runs off the paper, but it can't be too thick that you can't pipe it out of a Ziploc bag. Once it gets to a consistency like you see here, you can put it in a Ziploc bag. Now that you've finished your puffy paint, you're ready to start creating your labyrinth. In order to create a labyrinth, you'll need a template to follow. In the video description below, there are templates you can print off like this, or videos that show you how to draw your own. It's up to you what you wanna do. You're going to glue your template to your cardboard. This makes it a sturdier labyrinth and so that the paper doesn't get too soggy from the paint. Then cut a hole in one of the corners of your Ziploc bag. You don't want to cut the hole too big or else too much paint will come out when you're trying to trace the lines. You want to make sure there's room between the lines so that your finger can trace the path. All right, now that you've created your labyrinth, it's time to learn how to use it. This is usually a silent activity, but having an adult with you can help when you're learning. It can be a nice break to do a silent activity, as kids say that they get tired of trying to explain how they're feeling or what they're thinking. There's no right or wrong way to use your labyrinth. This is just a tool to help you slow down and pay attention to what's happening inside of you. This is your labyrinth, so you can decorate it in any way that you want to. Before you start, it can be helpful to focus on a topic, maybe what's happening in your own body. Sensations in our bodies can give us clues about how we're feeling. Some kids tell us that they feel like they have a tingle in their throat or feel like a hole in their tummy or a pain in their head. If you feel these, you can try to focus on them, breathing deeply using your labyrinth path to try to make them feel lighter. Or you could choose to remember a memory that you really love. Why did that make you feel so good? Focusing on what part of that special memory or moment that made your body feel so good. What did you hear, feel, smell, taste? Or you could focus on a happy and calm place where you can just be yourself. Maybe that's the beach or at the park, laying on the grass. There's so much that you can focus on and it's up to you. There's no right or wrong way to use it. Sometimes focusing on our inside world can be overwhelming or make us feel off in addition to giving a release and calm. It's important to know that if you feel unsafe or uncomfortable being with it on your own, that you can gently bring yourself back to the world. One way to do this is by grounding. Grounding is when we tell our brain and body that we're present in the here and now, we're not in a different space or time that maybe felt painful or scary. There's lots of different ways that you can ground yourself. You could go get a glass of water, you could sway back and forth, you could stand up and shift your weight from one foot to the other. It can be helpful to feel that you can get through hard feelings and uncomfortable sensations and help ourselves feel better. We would love to see the labyrinth you created or any of the other activities. You can email us at art at griefcenter.org to share a picture of your activities. Thanks for being with us today. We know that being with grief feelings is hard, especially if you're feeling alone. So remember to reach out to a caring adult if you need support or kids help phone at any time. 
Join us next week for another brief grief activity. Thanks for watching.